Poor road conditions can lead to a lot of problems, especially if you've never been on that road before and you don't know where it's taking you. If you're looking for a way to put your phone on the motorcycle, why don't you check out Rockform? Great product, I bought it myself and I use it every single day. All right, so what can we learn from this incident, everybody? This one specifically, I wanna talk about the road conditions and then the crest of the hill and then the need for gear because we're gonna go into that. So let's go ahead and watch this. We have chevrons dictating, it's a left-handed turn. We have, the ground looks terrible. We have a crest right here, can't see over, can't see over. Oh, there's traction, oh, lost traction. We're gonna go straight because we can't stop and keep turning with the lost traction. And then we're gonna dump the bike. The tire's still moving, not good. Hot parts, hot parts, hot parts. And the person says they're yelling for the other rider knowing he can't hear me. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this right now. All right, so this first frame, let's gather as much information as we possibly can from this. We have the sun in our eyes. We have a Chevron right here dictating it's a left-handed turn. We have ground that is really bad. And it might be later on in the day, uh, I don't know how many miles they've been riding, so maybe there's a little bit of fatigue, but we're gonna go with what we know. Light in their face, left-handed turn, ground is really bad. And we have somebody up front. So you can see the little dot, little tiny dot right there. We have another rider up front. So peer pressure could play a role in this. Ground conditions can play a role in this. The sun can play a role in this. Let's start, start minimizing some of these things and some of the risks that are associated with that, okay? So the ground is really tore up. That's gonna have a loss of traction or you're gonna have some issues with the gravel. So we're gonna move up to the part where there's gravel and let's keep going, let's keep going. There it is. So we got gravel right here. You also see some water right there. You see the road conditions are terrible. And this is a, a rural roads so we're going to have a lot of different debris not a lot of city you know like uh, maintaining of roads so you're going to have this kind of stuff uh, possibly where you live but look at the wet road right there the water right there that's going to possibly be from rain so rain is actually going to move around and mess up you know all the gravel and all the dirt on the roads typically the gravel and dirt on the roads are going to be off to the sides or in the center like in lane position two right here and then you're gonna have lane position one and lane position three, relatively low gravel because that's where car tires are actually kicking it up and pushing it off to the side. When it rains, you're gonna have gravel all across. It's not gonna matter where you're at and you're gonna have some issues, but most of it, it's gonna be off to the sides. As you can tell, like right here, this, the water is not in the way. But when we scroll forward, that right there, that little blip, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back. We're gonna see that little blip. See this little blip right here? That right there is loss of traction, okay? You're gonna get that little pucker factor, and that really, really, really sucks because uh, it's gonna mess you up. So one mistake or one issue is gonna cause you to mess up. You're like, oh no, I'm scared, I lost traction, I lost traction. You see how you can just keep going through the path, just commit to it, commit to it. But you lost traction, lost traction, I must keep it straight, I gotta slow down, stop. Panic, 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 panic. Go into the ditch. Once you go into the ditch, you're gonna have more issues here because the road is not flat, you're gonna hit a bump and you're gonna drop the bike. So when you drop the bike, especially in this situation, the bike actually lands on the person. You see the hot exhaust, so that's a hot part. You can possibly burn yourself and you can definitely burn yourself through clothes. Now that tire is continually moving. This person's left leg is on the other side of the tire. I don't know if that's where the chain is. I'm assuming that's where the chain is because you have the rotor here on this side and the exhaust on this side. So the chain or primary drive, remember you can have chain, drive shaft, or belt. I don't know if it's a chain, I don't know what's going on, and hopefully it's not catching this person, but the tire's still moving, tire's still moving. Hopefully your bike has a shut off, like an engine shut off switch, so when it gets tipped over, it'll shut off. But some people, they don't have that, so you really gotta watch out for that kind of stuff. If that happens to you, try your best to reach up for the engine shut off switch and cut it off that way. That way you're not getting uh, more damage to you from machinery. And right here it says yelling for the other rider knowing he can't hear me. This is going to be a very good situation and another reason why I like to have communication systems with whoever I'm riding. Especially if I'm riding with my wife, I want to be able to hear her tell me, hey, I crashed while I'm up front. I'm always paying attention in the mirrors, but still, I really wanna have that system. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll back and look at other subtle clues that I want you guys to pick up on the second, third, fourth, fifth playthrough. 
So we have chevrons right here, okay? We have the sun in our eyes and the ground, okay? We got that situated, everything is perfect right there. Remember, sun in the eyes is gonna really diminish your visibility. And then also these blind turns are gonna diminish your visibility too. And the ground, since it's gonna have really bad traction or you're gonna have gravel where you really have to start to diminish your speed, your, you have to increase your braking distance and then slow down on your turning because you need as much traction as possible to maintain two tires on the ground. So we're gonna move forward here. So we have the person up front, he's gonna go over the crest and right here, this is a crest, guys. This is a blind turn, whether it's going up and over, down and under, left to right, right to left, whatever it is, you're gonna have a blind corner in this situation. When that happens, you really need to slow down because if you go over too fast, before you know it, your search, evaluate, execute, let's say your search has been diminished because you're going so fast and it's blind. You, so you only have a half a second to evaluate and then execute. If you slow it down, you might have another half second. So now you have a full second of evaluation and then execution. That half second will save your butt more times than you think. If you can find something half a second to or even a full second before that you typically wouldn't because you slowed down a little bit, you are good. You are golden. You're doing a great job. And then after that, if you want, go ahead and speed back up when there's no hazards present. Slow down when you see some more hazards. But this right here, this full image right here is massive hazards. We have sun in our face, bad situation on the ground. We have a blind crest or blind turn, I call them vertical turns, we have a chevron right here dictating that this is a sharp turn. Now what it didn't show on any of this stuff is that you have an actual intersection right here. So you have a blind turn that is sharp with sun in your eyes, bad ground, just recently rained, and there's an intersection. You see how there's all these different things that could cause an accident. The one thing that did cause an accident on this one was the loss of traction, but Remember, guys, it's not just, hey, can I go fast over this? I'm going to have a loss of traction. Not a big deal. I can, you know, do whatever I need to do to get around that. But here's the thing. All those different factors, bad road, sun in the eyes, blind turn, intersection, gravel. It recently rained. I don't know if my tires are good. I don't know if I did a T-clocks. I don't know when I did a T-clocks in this situation. These are all different things that it starts to add up and it starts increasing your risk. Risk, 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 risk. So let's minimize that. Let's do a T-clocks. Let's make sure we slow down before blind curves. If the road is terrible, I'm going to tell my buddy, hey, this road's terrible. I don't want to slip and fall. This is kind of dumb. Let's not ride fast. If we're in a group, I'm going to really tell them that so that there's no peer pressure involved, no ego. Hey, we're riding nice and chill. All these different things. That is what I want you guys to walk away from these videos is that let's pick apart the one or two or three or four things that is specific to this situation so that we can apply some really good principles and foundation when it comes to a situation like this for us. Now there's a bunch of other vehicles and crashes and all these other things that I do. That is when it's a two vehicle crash. This is a single vehicle crash with different factors that we have 100% control over. Let's do that guys. Let's focus on that. Let's make sure that we are staying safe, that we can continue doing this awesome hobby or whatever it is, your passion, I don't, your job, whatever it is. I want you guys to be safe. I don't want anything bad to happen to you guys. This has been one of the best things for me, physically, mentally, everything. I want to share that with you. I want to make sure you guys love it, you become confident, and you do what you need to do to have a great time safely. That's all it is. But with that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll be seeing you around. So let's go ahead and go play by play on this one. Uh, so right now the person up front is going to be the one that's going to be going off the road and he's not even in his lane. So I'm assuming this is a beginner rider and he goes into this a little bit too quick. You see the rear tire, there it is. There's the skid and he's going to go off road and he's going to try to ride it out. And that's exactly what he does. 